All right, guys, welcome to chapter six. Much like we did with the electric field, we laid the foundation and then saw what it did in matter. We're doing the same thing with the magnetic field, of course, magnetostatics, and how that interacts with matter. This is a little more difficult to uh, work through, but it's definitely something that's used in a laboratory quite often. Uh, first things first, we have to deal with the magnetization of materials, just like we dealt with the polarization with the electric field. So to start, let's calculate the torque exerted on the square loop shown in the diagram due to the circular loop. Assume R is much larger than A or B. And if the square loop is free to rotate, what will its equilibrium orientation be? All right, let's take a look. So we see the square loop to the left, current running um, to where it produces a magnetic field pointing up and A pointing to the right. R is much larger than A or B, as stated in the question, and we have a current on the square loop B such that the field is pointing to the right. All right, let's dive in. What we need to know is that the torque in is equal to the magnetic dipole across the magnetic field. This uh, dipole field can be written in the coordinate free form, which we've seen before, and thus let's chug away. The magnetic field in the dipole moment for the circular loop is m1 equal the magnetic area or the vector area, which is pi a squared times i, and we'll call it m1 z hat. Okay, now also to note that r hat is pointing in the y hat direction. So the magnetic field from this is z hat dot y hat, which is zero, and in the y hat direction, minus m1 z hat. So once we simplify it through, we get that B1 is equal to mu naught over four pi, pi a squared i over r cubed in the z hat direction. Alrighty. But we want the torque on the square loop. Okay, so what this means is that we have to take M2 cross B1, where M2 is just B squared since that's the vector area and the i is uh, pointing in the y hat direction. So we use that. Okay, uh, so then we take the cross product and we see that we have a bunch of constants that can get shuttled out front and we're left with the cross product of y hat cross z hat, which we should know in the permutation group goes to x hat. All right, so we're left with n equal negative mu naught over four pi, pi times abi squared over r cubed in the x hat direction with the orientation in the negative z hat meaning that that's the orientation it's going to want to rotate and settle in. Again, if we have a torque pointing on something, that means we're going to rotate. Same thing like in the linear case, if I have a force on something, it's going to accelerate. Okay, so that's why we're in that location, or orientation rather. Good stuff, and we'll definitely see it more.